thank you, folks. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, it's uh, finally happened. Somebody in the uh, Clinton administration has been indicted. Uh, I know mo most people think that already happened, but um, <laughs> nobody was ever indicted until yesterday. Uh, Agriculture Secretary Mike Espy indicted on 39 counts of accepting gifts from agriculture companies. And he's the Agriculture Secretary. That looks bad. <laughs> Yeah, and the critics are saying this shows in the agriculture department, one hand washes the other, uh, which might have been a good policy during this recent E. coli problem we were having. You know. so, uh, now, uh, Motel 6. How many of you stay at Motel 6? They are... It's a high-class crowd we get here. I, know, I knew that. They are uh, facing charges of minority discrimination in a class action suit because apparently they have been treating, that's what they say, uh, the minorities worse than the white folks who come into that hotel, which is not kosher. And uh, this may be true because, you know, I stayed in a Motel 6 recently. And uh, the machine in the hall, uh, instead of having ice cubes, had vanilla ice. I <laughs> think that's a... I'll just go on. Anyway, other, another ugly story. Uh, you know who Abner Louima is, right? He's the uh, Haitian immigrant who was horribly brutalized by the somebody in that 70th precinct uh, policeman in New York City, uh, horribly violated with a toilet plunger. And he is now suing for $55 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but uh, not as much as it would have cost to get a regular plumber, actually. <laughs> And uh, more bad news for the Kennedys. They have had their problems this year. First, that babysitter uh, scandal, you know, and then uh, Joe Kennedy with his wife, his former wife, writing that book about how bad a guy he was. And now Joe Kennedy, who was going to run for governor, has pulled out of the race. Uh, actually, he didn't pull out. He said he's annulling his candidacy. <laughs> Well, finally, uh, in Bosnia, it's getting ugly over there in Bosnia. You know, we've had our, our peacekeeping forces, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of, over there for about a year, and they haven't really gotten involved in the problems that we said we would get involved in, getting the, the people who are bad off the street. Now we're starting to do that, and the Serbs are responding. Yesterday, club-wielding Serbs attacked our peacekeeping forces. No injuries, but they said some of our soldiers were so traumatized they may never uh, sexually harass again. <laughs> Coming, it's all been satirized for your Panel, the national affairs editor of Vibe magazine. She's also a correspondent for ABC for I Shadaya. Yeah. There's my honey. How are you? Yeah. Good to see you, baby. Thanks for coming. He is an astronomer, author, and MSNBC contributor. His book is Silicone Snake Oil, Clifford Stahl. <laughs> Cliff, how are you Good doing again? You. Good to see you, sir. There you go. <laughs> With and without Van Halen, he's been making multi-platinum rock and roll for over two decades. He's on a national tour with his new CD, Marching to Mars, Sammy Hagar! <laughs> hey, Sammy, good to meet you. Thanks for coming. And finally, he is a Saturday Night Live alumnus whose films include A League of Their Own, The Great White Hype, and High School High, John Lovitz! Uh, you can wear those glasses. You're a rock star, like. Well, Jamie. I was going to wear mine, but you know, I didn't want to do it and be pretentious, and he come out and did it, and. And I'm funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of uh, pretentious, the Rolling Stones are back on tour. I thought we'd start with that since we have a legitimate rock star here. Not that that's, that's pretentious. Right. I think the Rolling Stones are great. Uh, They're great. But, but you know, every time they go on tour, which is like clockwork every three or four years, people say. How can these guys keep doing it? Let me give you my theory. I think they can do it when others can't because they still are skinny, have their hair, and are ugly. 
Well, they also, they've never fired their lead singer, you know what I mean? That's a smart move. Oh. Ooh, that for longevity. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, like a bitter pill <laughs> that you're coughing back up. Well, it helps, you know. Familiar faces. But, yeah. you know, the, the fact that he coughed up the bitter pill makes him in better health than Keith Richards, so. <laughs> you know, I see it as... I see it as weird that we're driving down this highway of cool music and cool stuff's going on and our eyes myopically are focused on the rearview mirror listening to music from long ago rather than listening to cool stuff that's popping up alongside and saying, geez, wouldn't it be cool if there were, like, oh, new, new bands coming along the stage that, that were, were... And you saying, think Keith Richards is hot. <laughs> I mean, the fun You're stuff not is happening not, not 30 years You're ago. You're not a classic rock kind of guy. See, I'm really not either. I think it's unfair, even though I'm, you know, I'm well uh, taken care of in the classic rock world. I think that still, I'd rather hear new music as well. I mean, I, when, I've got a new record, so that's okay, but I hate to hear old stuff instead of new stuff, because I think newer bands should get a better shot But at. it's always the old stuff that has that emotional appeal. I mean, you remember yeah. exactly who you were French kissing. You remember exactly what hideous clothes you were wearing in what high school. Or, I mean, you, you just remember things. And I think that sometimes you grow fonder of music the further removed you are from it. Then yeah. why, isn't, why isn't opera and Beethoven enjoying this rebirth of, oh, they of, had their of run. wonderness? <laughs> they had their run. You could start Oh, yeah. Start wearing <laughs> Beethoven T-shirts, you know. Start being do a you groovy. Do you, you have an opinion? <laughs> yeah, John, it, it's just not exactly a heavy political issue. <laughs> Half Jew, no man is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Well, I think that they're just great. And I, you know, if it wasn't for but, them, Sammy, I mean, you know, they, I don't think you'd be any of them. Absolutely. You know, Mick, Mick's my first hero. First hero, Mick, my first hero. I saw I got everyone you know, he first still American has classic. a 28-inch waist. I really think that's the difference. When you look at Crosby, <laughs> Stills, and Nash, you say, oh, they must have, <laughs> they must have. <laughs> Wait, <we're crossing. laughs> They reunited at a Weight Watchers <laughs> meeting. You know what? They haven't seen each other in all these uh, years. Oh, and... Mick, I happen to know. <laughs> And I, I, I mean, and you look like, I mean, that's why you're so successful. You got all your hair. I got a 32-inch waist. And, well, whatever it is, I don't want to know. And I got... <laughs> <laughs> I heard on Mick Jagger, I heard he runs like 14 miles on stage during a show. Oh, no, 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 no. Back no. off! Hey, listen. Hagar! <laughs> I love the guy. 14 no. miles. Three max. There's a little Three bit max. of a, what do you call that? It's on a uh, treadmill. So how naive are you? 14 miles on stage during a He's show. He's running a lot. That was me. <laughs> yeah. You're the guy who said, hey, O.J. Simpson was nice to me. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. And your initials are BM. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I should know better than to tangle with you. We have to take a break. We'll be right back. To be in the Los Angeles area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 213-852-2655. All right, we're talking about the, the uh, Rolling Stones, and one of the theories why they're so able to do what they do into this late age is that they're aliens, um, <laughs> which would interest, you know, that there's a group called the SETI, Search for in Extra Intelligence Institute, that has gotten, since 1961, $58 million from the federal government, as they would say on the news, your money, uh, and they, of course, have found not one shred of evidence that there is ever any alien life that's ever visited this planet. Yeah, I'm a real firm believer in, in uh, aliens, right? Uh, and uh, for You are. For you us, believe there are aliens. Yes. They, they're, they're definitely and out there. And why do you think there are aliens? Well, first of all, the size of, of just our galaxy alone, to think of the probability of having a planet a lot like ours, you would probably know more about this than me, but it's very large, right? As an astronomer, sure. Mucho. <laughs> Many, many planets just like ours. And to think that we are the only ones is the most egotistical thought anyone could ever have. To me, that would scare me to death to think in this whole huge 
universe, but that we're the only life like this, or intelligent life in this whole universe, is so stupid. But, that's a that's but that sure doesn't mean they're coming over to visit. The, oh, the, problem, so, the problem of physics is that, is that you may have distant, distant planets, but getting from one to another is an extraordinarily tough thing to do. Yes, it, in our, in our primitive, uh, it, with our primitive knowledge, but they've conquered the dimension. How do you know that they've superior. conquered the dimension? Because I've had contact. Yes, I have. <laughs> wow. And they're smart son of a guns, man. You, you know, a lot Sammy. of drugs too. Maybe. No, I wasn't high. I, I, I've taken drugs before. I've experimented, but Sammy, I wasn't I, high. And this I, was long before. Did I'd you ever tell this to Van Halen before you were fired? Or? <laughs> Maybe they. Why is it? Why is it Ed that? Ed now have green cards. They're not aliens. Ed now they got green cards. But but. Why is it that, that all the aliens contact rock stars and and people hanging out in the backwoods of New Mexico and they never come to an observatory and chat with the astronomers or physicists? Seems That's to me there's point. a. Most of the time you don't know that it happened. What do you a lot mean of you people... were contacted? What is this? Uh, through what year was this? Sam? 1967. 67, the yes. summer of love. Sammy. Yes. In Fontana, California. In Fontana. Show him your, show your third eye. <laughs> and... <clears throat> Boy, you could do anything on this show. I like this. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean you were contacted? 1967, you yes. were contacted? I was How? laying in bed in my room. Right. And uh, all of a sudden... I felt like something was going on, and uh, I was sleeping. I was sleeping. It was in the four, three or four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I opened my eyes. My body couldn't move, and my room was pure white. I mean, like as bright as you could possibly imagine. And I felt, uh, you know, like a, um, a communication, kind of like through an antenna type communication. And uh, uh, as antenna. soon as I got hip, they got hip. That I started getting hip. That it was happening. And they had a code that was sort of like a computer code that broke, broke the concentration, I mean, broke the connection. And as soon as that happened, my room went black with my eyes still wide open, and I could move again. And I got up and ran outside and ran around. I was so wired. And from that day... <laughs> and from, from that day... Uh, you were a hippie. Synchronicity in my life exists. I see things happen as they're supposed to happen, and I, and I put everything together everything makes sense to me i'm sorry to say that but actually this well, life that's... actually makes sense to me where's bill gonna be say five years from now oh i'm not a fortune teller oh 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 but i'm sure bill will be right there in that chair in five years <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you're begging penny marshall for another job <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> but you're not supposed to remember you're not supposed to remember yeah. But some Good people one. remember. Do we have a clip from remember. Rat Boy that we were both in? Yeah. I don't remember you having any lines in that one, my friend. <laughs> Speaking of lines, now, Sammy, are you sure this wasn't drug-induced? It was before I'd ever taken drugs. Really? Yeah, I took drugs in 68, 69 after oh, that. okay. But how do you know it wasn't the afterlife? No, I mean, when I say drugs, I was never a drug addict, but, you know, I smoke a lot. Yeah, and when you no, say I... a white light, that's what people say about when they die. Yeah. <laughs> They say, I died, and I saw a great white light, well, I'll and they tell you felt what. an intelligence. I mean, it sounds like the same kind of a thing. No, it was alien. I mean, it was, they, they're, they were in a craft. They did were you actually see them? in a craft. Did you see little No, men? no, I, I could see them while we were connected, you see. What did I, they I look could, like? Uh, sort of like the, uh, the closest thing to us, like Close Encounters. And it's a thing like that. After it happens <coughs> to you, you go on this little quest, and you find things. You find these little clues all over in your life about things that lead you from one thing to the other. Hmm. And it's like a mission. I don't know. I don't know if I was programmed or, or, or zapped or deprogrammed or what. But I don't feel special or nothing. It just that that really changed a lot of things. Well, in my it supports life. what you it was said. Really Thirty-four cool. percent of the well, twenty percent of those people in, around here have been contacted by aliens. They're, they're but, constantly. They're experimenting all the time with but us. But I have. My there's head. bad ones. There's three or four different ones too. Some of them are bad. They come and take well, body parts and stuff. The gray ones. You don't want to mess with the gray ones. And, guys, and, <laughs> and some of them are. Uh, <laughs> Consumers, I have to take a break. We will uh, be back. Here.
talking about aliens, and uh, you mentioned how they look. Now, you're our skeptic here about this, right, Clifford? You're skeptical about this. Let me ask you this, and I am too, but why does every report that humans give of aliens, they all have that same look, right? They do. They're shorter, yeah. big eyes. I've heard a couple of good things about that. One is that it's all this crypto-sexual experience. Like, you know, Ooh. if you're really, really repressed and, you, you know, you have this dream late at night that you were raped by an alien and maybe it felt good, then it was no responsibility of your own. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's a lot better than fantasizing about Fabio because then, you know, you were having impure thoughts. So it's like this crypto-sexual experience. Oh on the one dream every night. <laughs> Why I are, never heard if, that it was a good dream. If you're going to think about <laughs> Martians, why don't you think of a little six-wheeled robot on Mars as a, as a, as a stranger? No, there's no my, life in our solar system. I mean, you know, maybe dead ants us. or something. But There's us. A whole oh, lot no, of no, life. But I mean, I mean on the other planets. Nah. And that's, to me, that's the problem with the alien seekers, that they want to go out and find the, the, the magic potion that, that, that <laughs> solves all of our problems elsewhere without looking around for a very mundane, very real world that has wonderful, cool things happening on it. But why, do they, what, what, but why do people say aliens all look alike? They used to say that about the Jews, Well, John. it's like, well, uh, <laughs> Because the lack of creativity amongst those who are oh, coming so up with it. That, that no, there's rather three or four different ones. There's the ones, uh, there's some robots that, that do actual space travel, and they're like, like computers. Uh, real robots, you know, that look like people and stuff. Mm -hmm. They look like aliens, but they're... Uh, and those are the ones that got the guys in Pascagoula, Mississippi, if you remember that case of uh, Calvin Parker and, and, uh, Char and this guy, his nephew, Charlie, and one of the guys killed himself afterwards, and the old robots got and those why guys. do they probe us? <clears throat> why do they... Why do you experiment? probe look, your girlfriend? Look. My God! <laughs> I have nothing but questions from you every night. What are you... What's about this? Don't you read? <laughs> Do you know anything? <laughs> well, <it's done. laughs> I wonder, well, maybe. Here's my opinion, Bill. I think that we're <laughs> the aliens. I think the aliens are this man because see, we're the only mm. one that builds computers and buildings, and no one else is doing that. I don't see my cat saying, "Look, I just built a new car," you know. <laughs> and, and we also, in uh, you know, the smog and everything, so we destroy our environment, which means we're not in harmony with the Earth. So we're the aliens. No, but I even if there are aliens in outer space, okay, let's say there are, there are. Now, how am I going to pay my rent? <laughs> yes. Well, if you have a new spaceship, maybe you can turn it in for a couple of bucks. But, John, what, why is it that people are believers in aliens and they don't believe things that Bill Clinton right. says? Right. Maybe it has to do with, maybe it has to do with, we're very... <laughs> that could be a bad example. No, but it's true. We're, we're very familiar with human nature, but not many people know much right. science. The same amount of percentage of people who think there's aliens think Vincent Foster didn't kill himself. They think he and Hillary were doing it in the, the White House, and she shot him or something. They won't accept that, but they will accept <laughs> that there's moon men who came down... Not moon men. Here we go again. Well, they're not from this solar system. Did you see Contact? System. Did you see 2001? Do you get out? <laughs> And the important point there is it's all science fiction. It's fictional. Why do John, people believe in fiction hey, when... John, what about your... your hair? You're talking about science fiction. <laughs> I can't look at my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and my background's in science. I do think Nothing. it's worth pointing yeah, out that when you, you talk really about... You should make contact with a comb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, a comb will make it worse. What, what I was going to say is that I, I think it's worth pointing out that whenever we pick, depict aliens in movies, we're really working through our own issues. You know, yeah. the, the abduction stuff has to do with sometimes with your... Like, we do, do we Do we have yeah, We have issues. It's like therapy. Right. It's like intergalactic <laughs> therapy. That's a very it's like, intelligent... You know, think about the movie Alien Nation. It was totally about race relations. No, like these people came in thinking, from a slave no. ship. Gee, who could that be? Right. You know, and no, it's like we're based on the real stuff. stuff. No, yeah. it's based the on Jews the real stuff. Israel and the real Egypt. Right. Yeah. It's based off Buzz real Aldrin, experience. who was an there actor who's been to the moon, said he once went to a Star Trek convention and they all pushed him aside to get an autograph from Sulu. Yes, but I Buzz also saw aliens out there. He, Buzz saw UFOs. A lot of the astronauts have seen UFOs and they've come back and talked yeah, about Yeah, I had Buzz on the show. He's as nutty as you are. we got to take yeah. a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Farley, one of your old compatriots from yeah. Internet Live. John, what are you doing? You're not allowed to eat on the show. I thought because I was very funny, it's a little reward. Did you bring <laughs> <up> all of us? <laughs>